Welcome to the SecureX Update. It is June 2021, I'm Ben Greenbaum, and we have four versions to cover in this episode, from 1.71 to 1.74. As you may expect, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. And we'll start at the beginning, or maybe even before the beginning. It used to be that in order to get to use SecureX at all, you had to configure an integration with at least one licensed and qualifying product. Not so anymore, or at least not entirely. If you've already set up SecureX, then this won't affect you. But if you haven't, then hey, you can now get a free trial of SecureX before you even configure a product. Here you see a dashboard populated entirely with demo data, giving you access to all the dashboard controls and panels. No product has yet been configured in this account. This is all demo data from demo modules. If we go into the threat response, we can take various guided tours of the threat response interface, and they will show us the various parts of the interface and what is contained in those panels and what they mean. Other guided tours will go into more detail about each of the panels in turn. In addition, we can even perform our own investigations with any observables that are of interest to us. So I'm going to paste in a bunch of observables and click investigate. And now we see, prior to me having set up even a single qualifying product, that I'm able to do an investigation against the default threat intelligence modules that come with SecureX when you first sign in. I get judgments and verdicts, sightings and indicators, relationships. Basically, I get access to the Talos Threat Intelligence Database, the AMP Global Intelligence Database, and AMP File Reputation Database just for trying it out. When I'm ready to actually use SecureX, I can go into the Integration Modules panel or click Enable SecureX to start setting up. And that leads us into the next area to cover, which is two new items in configuration. We have a new wizard to walk us through the process of setting up an FMC integration and the ability to automatically create dashboards using those integrations. Let's have a look at that FMC wizard. So I'm going to go enable firepower. There's that automatic dashboard option. We'll come back to that. But you see here we have this wizard that says get started. And this is going to redirect us to SSE and walk us through the process of setting up our first FMC integration. We're not going to follow that all the way through. Let's now have a look at the automatic dashboard option. So I'm going to configure an AMP for endpoints integration module, paste in my API credentials, and then you see this option, create dashboard, and it's checked by default. I can uncheck it if I want to, but I'm going to leave it checked and click save. Then I can go to the dashboard, and at first I have nothing, but then without me taking any action, it's going to create this AMP for endpoints dashboard for me, and I can then customize it and tailor it to my needs as necessary, but it at least does that first step of creating for me a dashboard based on the configuration that I just added. That will happen for any module that has dashboard capabilities. So let's talk about the ribbon. The big change in the ribbon, the one thing we're going to talk about is that you can now resize it if you need a little bit more real estate. So here's a casebook. We've got 19 observables in this casebook. If I hit the arrow, I have to scroll. If I want to be able to see all of these at one time on the page, I can now just drag the upper part of the ribbon up until I have enough room to see it all. It's as simple as that. And it remembers your settings for the next time. Let's investigate this so that we can talk about some user interface changes and some new response actions we can take on emails. So let's have a look at those. First off, we have some new layout options for the panel, well, just the one new layout option. We used to have stacked and automatic. Now we also have the option of fit to screen. So stacked puts all of your panels vertically, timeline, graph, details, Automatic chooses for you based on your resolution and screen size, and fit to screen simply makes sure that you always have the three panels visible no matter what your screen size is. That being said, we also have new options for full screen on all the panels. Timeline, details, and of course the graph. And now every panel also has the sync option. You can see here, panel syncing is enabled on all three panels. This works the same way that panel syncing always worked in the graph, but now we can drive that from, for example, the timeline. So I'm going to select this day on the timeline. I'm going to select this file hash in the timeline. And you see that it is now the focus on the graph and you see that it is now what is displayed in the details panel. So now let's talk about response actions. Here are some message IDs in the graph. I'm going to pick any one of these message IDs, and I have new Cisco Secure email options of initiate deletion, initiate forward, and one combined action of initiate forward delete. I'm going to forward this email. For this to work, I have to have configured a recipient address to receive these forwards 
in the module. Remember, module settings are organization-wide, so no matter who clicks the button to forward the email, it's still going to go to whatever email address I put in this box here. And those are the updates for threat response. Let's talk about orchestration. And the biggest news is the availability of the new remote adapter, allowing your orchestration workflows to communicate with your on-premises devices. And as well, we've got a bunch of new workflows for you. So let's get into it and talk about that orchestration remote adapter. So the orchestration remote adapter allows you to leverage for the first time on-premise devices from orchestration workflows. Now orchestration is hosted in the SecureX infrastructure in the cloud. And so we needed a way to allow you to pass commands to the devices on your network and inside your network. It's a virtual machine that lives in your environment and receives commands from the SecureX orchestration infrastructure and then passes those commands to the appropriate devices on the inside. Here in the orchestration user interface, we can go to the settings and go to remote configuration. And this is where you can download the appliance code, set up a new remote, or edit any of the remotes that you currently already have deployed. As well, in the orchestration documentation, which will be linked in the resources section of this video, you can go to remote and find out all you need to know about the orchestration remotes, including the ability to watch an overview video of the technology. So while we're here in the documentation, let's look at the list of workflows and talk about the second item in our orchestration update. There are a number of new workflows available for you. Everything from 20 onwards in this list is more recent than the last video. We've got several that create incidents from detections by various Cisco products like Cisco Secure Endpoints and Umbrella. And then we've got several also using Identity Services Engine that use the remote to connect to demonstrate the capabilities of this new offering. And of course, there's a few that do other things as well. Take the time to look over the list and see if there's anything here that you should be leveraging in your environment. And the last item for us to discuss is SecureX Academy. SecureX Academy lives at learnsecurex.cisco.com and it's where you can go to learn all about SecureX. It is a guided and curated curriculum that will take you through what SecureX is for, what it does, how it does it, and how all of that can help you. There's overviews of the platform itself, overviews of several of the orchestration workflows, including configuration tutorials, configuration tutorials and overviews of many of the Cisco integrations, a look at third-party integrations and how they can work, as well as specific training about Cisco Secure products. Inside the SecureX platform introduction, you can see a number of different lessons, wherein you will find out everything that you need to know to get started with this powerful tool. So I encourage you to check out the SecureX Academy as soon as you can. And that wraps it up for this update. We've gone through quite a bit. And as usual, I'm going to leave you with some resources. LearnSecureX.Cisco.com, SecureX Academy, I was just telling you about. The documentation and the video playlist for SecureX orchestration are great resources for you to learn more about the built-in orchestration and automation engine of SecureX. This series of SecureX Update videos has its own playlist at the third bullet point link there. And of course, always check the release notes if you want more details about what's been added to SecureX recently. Thank you, as always, for your interest in SecureX and your attention to these updates. We are working nonstop to bring you improvements and additional features and capabilities in the Cisco security platform. And I hope you stay tuned to these updates and continue to make the best possible use of all of the tools and all of the people that you already have by using them better together with SecureX. Thank you.